Hello, welcome to Earth Engine tutorial 115. In uh, video tutorial 114, I show you how to create near real time uh, global land cover data using the new uh, recently released uh, uh, land cover data called uh, Dynamic uh, World. And so that one was just one uh, data product, and there are a couple other data products, uh, including the European Space Agency uh, Global Land Cover and also the ESRI global link cover uh, those are in um, uh, produced based on imagery of the choir in uh, 2010 and so this is dynamic you, you can uh, go back to 2015 all the way to 2020 so in this video i'm going to show you how actually you can compare the data sets uh, together side by side uh, first let's go to the website to download the novel example so go to gmap.org and then uh, tutorials scroll down all the way to the end and click number 115 the notebook and so just download this one to your computer click the download icon and save this one to your computer after that uh, just open the uh, the terminal and just geo left so uh contact activate the contact environment and uh, where uh, gmap is installed then you can start opening the notebook so double click and so this one here uh, has a couple of sections it's a bit longer but uh it's uh, quite uh, simple and straightforward so let's get started first just import the library and then so the first one here uh what we're trying to do is to look at the uh isa uh, word cover um so this is the first version if you like you can click the link to go to the google earth engine web page to take a look at the data and so this one is quite unique uh it's different from the S3 and also the dynamic uh, world data set because it was based on 10 meter both Sentinel 1 and Sentinel 2 so SAR data and also optical data the other two data sets are both based on Sentinel 2 data only so it's uh, just based on optical data and this one uh, in general I think is the uh, uh, bad, in better quality compared to the other two data set and I'm going to show you side by uh, comparison side by side later so first let's um, uh, create a map and then because this is an image collection so the first one uh, is actually uh, the uh, link cover data and then this is how you want to visualize that if you want you can go to see here so it's kind of the same from this one uh, just a javascript uh, version so uh, first uh, let's execute this one and then you can take a look keep in mind we also add the um legend so low right corner here you should be able to see the legend so we add a title right isa link cover this is where it's showing up here at the top and also the built-in legend is called isa underscore world cover and so you can take a look you can zoom in you can zoom out so this is the 10 meter resolution data set uh, based on both sentinel 1 and sentinel 2, 2 data set you can click the upper right corner you can turn the layer on and off uh, you can also change the opacity uh, if you want right and then you can navigate you can take a look this is just one single image so the entire uh, um, the data set is just one single image and that's why you see it's pretty fast because it does not do any computation so google sending so in here in the jupyter notebook we just load the data set um, it's not doing any computation so it's pretty quick okay so this is the uh as we uh no the isa global data set uh, as you can see here it has uh, i think uh, 11 classes right so you can also see the value if you want you can use the inspector here to click your mouse on the map you should be able to see the value for example 10 10 represent trees right and the purple color it should be 40 right so 40 is uh, cropland right and you can for example the red color represent uh, urban area view, view area so like 50 50 so this is how you can visualize the data interactively on the map and next let's take a look at the uh, azure global data land cover again uh, this is uh, simply based on sentinel 2 data and this one is not in the official earth engine catalog it's in the awesome ge community data set uh, maintained by sam and so if you look at this one here uh, this is a, an image collection so it's slightly different and it's not an image so it's the image collection you can take a look at the source code also it has kind of similar classes like you not know, water trees grass flooded vegetation uh so on and so on and this is how we're going to visualize that um keep it in mind because it's an image collection so we need to actually mosaic them into one single image 
and then we can ha see how we want to visualize that also add the data layer to the map uh, lastly we s we also add the laser right the title and also the big uh built-in laser let's execute and take a look uh the color is slightly different uh, the symbology is different but uh the lane cover class is uh, quite similar but uh, you're welcome to customize if you want to make them the same but they're not exactly the same they're like similar they have some overlap but it's not quite the same so this one here again similarly you can use the inspector you can click your mouse you should be able to see the value so this one here with seven right uh earlier the uh, isa global link cover uh, build up area is actually 50 so it, here is seven so the values are different right? and then green one it's uh three right two uh, the brown yellow one is five like crop right so this is how you can visualize this one again these are all existing data set we just do the mosaicing so it is not still uh, not much computation so the next one we're going to look at here is the latest one just released uh, last week uh, dynamic world lane cover by google and uh, world resources uh, institute and this one is quite unique because um, compared to the previous isa and azure one you only have one time period uh in 2020 this one is not this one is like all the images in the sentinel 2 catalog all images that have um a link uh, a cloud cover percentage less than 35 percent those images have all been classified so basically every individual image and then so what we're trying to do here we just actually to mosaic them create a lane cover composite so i'm going to show you step by step how we do that right first you can set uh, an image so in this case uh, we are going to do for the actually pretty much global scale but uh, this is a huge data set so it might take a while if the, your area is only you're interested in a, a small area you can specify this one so this is the lower left corner and the upper right corner so the longitude latitude longitude latitude so this is a bounding box of your reason of interest so if i just said this one is pretty much just a uh, uh, global scale and the start and the end date and this is where you can specify so uh it's up to you you don't have to use the entire year but in this case i'm just using for example uh, uh 2020 and 2021 so if to be comparable with the the previous uh two data set i can set uh, just for the year 2020 so they're basically just like the same year and then we just use this function called dynamic underscore world and, and you can specify for example your reason of interest uh the start day the end day and whether you want to clip uh to the area or not uh, also what kind of reducer you want to use by default it's going to use the maximum um because there are so many images throughout the year for example they say you have uh, 50 images uh, for the area of your reason of interest and so when you're trying to create a composite you need to decide what kind of reducer basically what kind of things you want to do with those images and by default it's going to use the max so basically count uh, uh, not the max the mode mode means the majority so for example in these, those 50 images sometimes they will classify as uh uh, water sometimes classified as grass sometimes as others it will just count who are the dominant dominant class and then just use that one throughout the year because things can change pretty quickly it can be snow it can be forest it can be water and it just take the majority and so for example in this case it might be forest and this is how you create a composite uh, if you don't want you can specify a smaller date range in that case you can get the exact image because if there's only one image it doesn't matter what reducer you use it's going to be, be the same but when you have multiple images then you need to decide uh, what's the pixel value how you decide a pixel value depends on a number of images right and then uh, lastly the return type so this one is quite important you need to understand uh, what this one is doing so uh, the return type has multiple if you scroll down here it has Q suite visualize class probability um if you see from here it's different from the previous two data set that you only only have one output but this one has also has a probability the hue suite by default you can just use the hue suite because it looks much better 
compared to just a flat map uh, because it has overlay on top of huge shade so it looks um much much better so let's take a look first and see what uh we looks like again after that you can add the layer so we have two data layers so just the hue shade and also the original link cover uh we also add the legends so dynamic world legends so if you see from this one here right similar to what we see earlier and so this one we have two data layers the original link cover class and also the hue shade and let me zoom in a little bit so they can see the difference right uh, this one you are seeing right now this is the hue shade so you can see uh, this is a water body right so in the center here water body because it's high probability um, that you classify and when you get to the ages um, border pixels age pixels they those are usually kind of mixed so it can be 50 50 so you don't know really which one is uh, has a dominant uh, probability that means they make, might be quite similar so it can be vegetation it can be water so in that case you take a low probability so it's low that means the hue shade is just like valley so if you have the mountains uh peak ridges those are usually like uh it's pretty sure but along the edges they are not quite sure the program the algorithm is not quite sure what's the real uh class so this one is like low especially for example here you kind of have something like a little bit mixed and so this one is the hue shade so if you want to go back to the previous one let me show you here it looks like this right so you, you clearly you can see the difference this is just similar to what we saw earlier in the other two data sets right it's just totally flat because right now in this dynamic world data set um we have the hue shade so you can create something like this right so let me show you if it's opacity all right looks much better so you can definitely if you want you can also add the probability if you want so uh, they just show you the uh, likelihood of a pixel being classified uh, as what and you can calculate for example the maximum probability let me see if we can show you for example let me add another one here everything else is the same it's just only thing you need to say is, is you, if you don't remember you can always uh, press shift tap on your keyboard to bring up the documentation and then just copy come back to here paste so this one would be uh, dw for example prob right and then you just need to add this one to the map so similarly come to here and i we can just use the default one we don't need to use that uh any uh, visualization so prob and then so we link our link our prob uh, oh, did the last one and run this one again so you'll be able to see uh how this hue shade image was created because it was based on the the flat class map and also the probability right so take a look at this one link cover and this one is the probability right so if you see i'm back to here so the brighter color means higher pixel value if you want you can also just use the inspector to take a look at right so this one here the level more uh, is zero water and then the maximum probability is 59 so that means among all the images uh or the choir uh in 2020 so the highest probability so mo for the majority of those are uh, actually being classified as water is uh 59 so it's high if you're along the edges it's pretty it's much lower right and that's why when you see the hue shade image uh it's like a, a very rather than a rich right so only 27 percent that means it's sometimes it's water sometimes it's vegetation or other classes and then so eventually this is what you get by combining these two images you know, behind the scene the function uh done it for you but uh, if you want to look at the source code you can you can go to uh look at the source code so this is how you get uh, the lane cover image for this new t um, most recent data set and for any location around the globe for any time period since 2015 right and so next let's compare the data set because uh now it's only one data set we only three individual data set that we have looked at but it would be nice that we can we can compare the data set side by side in this case we're going to use the split map so the split panel map <laughs> um let's execute this one just to show you what it looks like by default uh it's going to need two data layers so the layer on the left and also the data layer on the right you can use the function 
go e tie layer and then so the parameter this one being used here are exactly the same as this one uh, add layer so you can just simply copy whatever you have earlier and then just create this one so as we said earlier use earlier uh, the european space agency land cover and also the dynamic world land cover so these two and because this one at the hue set uh, we already have the visualization so you don't need to provide anything but for the european space agency that one is the original land cover data so we need to visualize and these are the two data layers after that just create a split map and so these two lines add the lesions so the lesions on the left and also the lesions on the right right so the you uh isa land cover and also the dynamic uh world land cover so this is what you see here on the left side on the right side and so you can compare now you can use this split uh the the, the slider to just slide to the left and to the right so you can compare uh the differences between these two data set let's zoom in a little bit to see a more um fine detailed difference right so you can see this is the dynamic one and this is the uh, isa one so you can see uh, it's actually quite different right and this one here the dynamic world that i said visually it looks much better because it's kind of a view uh, uh overlay on huge so you see um more uh, higher elevation low elevation, high probability low probability but compared with the isa one you will see it does a pretty good job in capturing for example linear features for example rows uh, uh, or other uh, smaller narrow one and for the google one it doesn't capture that so it's more like a little bit generalized so this one definitely it looks more generalized if you're looking at just sim some simple uh, link cover map you're not really requiring this kind of a scale and detail then probably the dynamic world data set might um, do a good job for you because it has multiple time periods but if you really want to do something very very good and capturing all the uh, small features then the european the isa one definitely is much better so you can see like the ro uh, rows and other smaller tiny ones right those are pretty much not nothing have been captured uh, even it's not captured as a view area because it's probably just too tiny uh, the reason is because um, this one based on uh, uh, deep learning algorithm based on the surrounding features and the, all the role network was pretty tiny so it's not enough actually to capture that um, uh, very fine scale details okay so this is how you can compare uh, ESA link cover and the dynamic uh, world uh, link cover next one uh, we can also compare the Azure, uh, Azure one so you can take a look and these two are pretty much similar because the land cover type are similar i think the training data that they use are also the same so and um, if you zoom in a little bit here right it's pretty close uh again because these two data set are solely based on sentinel 2 data and they don't use star data and also it's oh, you kind of use similar deep learning algorithm so you can see pretty much uh they're the same but the dynamic world data set uh it has a huge shade uh, uh so it looks better but visually when you compare the two classes it's pretty much very very similar I, again if you want to do a very uh um detailed comparison you can get a, an area and you can do some zonal statistics so in the uh previous video i did believe in uh, one one certain thing i show you how to for example calculate a global land cover area uh, if you want you can follow that video to, to calculate uh, how big uh, was the area or the percentage or uh, percentage of each land cover but for this video i'm just showing you how to compare them visually so you're welcome to uh, navigate to any reason of interest because this is at a global scale and for 2020 so the imagery app looks the, the imagery used to classify the images uh, pretty much uh, very very similar but uh, you can you can find you can customize them if you want but this is just showing you the differences between these two uh data set and you can maximize you can look at that if you want low right corner here there's a close button so once you're done if you want to return to the map um 
you can do that as well so if you close it's just going to return back to the original and it removes all the uh, existing data layer so this is how you can compare uh, the two data sets side by side you can also if you want you can compare the ESA and Azure side by side so you can uh, just customize the example again left layer right layer and then create a split map and then add the two legends and lastly we're going to set the center because by default if you add uh, the global scale the uh, the dynamic uh, wall the land cover data set might take a while to sort up so make sure that you zoom into a smaller area so they can see the land cover and they can zoom in and zoom out right so this is how you can compare these three land cover data set uh, they are all at 10 meter resolution but of course the quality is not different and no algorithm is perfect no land cover data set uh, would be perfect and you have to decide what best suit your needs and you can fine tune the area you can fine tune the algorithm to create one that best suit your needs but um, no automatic algorithm can create a perfect land covered product it will never uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to take uh, maybe a couple of decades but at least for now anything that's automatic it can done generally pretty good job but when you zoom into a small area it's going to see the difference in the how human or how some um, supervised algorithm might do better than unsupervised or automatic algorithm by machine learning and uh, uh, deep learning okay so that's all for this uh, video i hope to see you in the next one take care bye bye